things that might help. What doesn't work for me is very tricksy applications. And what I mean by tricksy are the whiz, bang, pow type, you know, I'm looking for business propositions. I'm not, and sometimes people would think it's very clever to come in and slap you around the face, but actually I'm looking for a business proposition. And I want to know very, very quickly whether or not we're going to read the business plan. I'm sure it's the same for you. You know, you don't, there are 200 business plans. I'm not going to read them all. What I am going to do is that, or that what they are going to do is read the summary of that. And so very quickly, very punchily, what's this business about? What's the opportunity? Why am I the right person to get there? What do I need my investment for? How much money do I need? What? So very, very punchy. If you're looking for angel investors, though, I think the thing that people don't do is look for the type of investor. Because I have a quite, I, at any one time, will have a basket of investments that your investment might or might not fit. And sometimes I just say no because I'm not looking for that style of investment. I'm too heavily invested in that area. Or... or or I've got, no, I've got no relevant experience. So I think what people don't do is they don't look for the right investor first. So find out somebody who has actually either got experience in that field, could add value, not just add cash, add value, whether or not you know, that they are, then you've heard them publicly say, I'm looking for. And also talk to people. Do you know anybody who is? Because often there's a mismatch between people who are trying to invest and people who want investments. They just can't find each other. You know, so just talking to people, saying, do you know anybody who, you know, it's, it's, a, it's just slog, isn't it? It's just slog. It's just do your work, do your homework, and approach the right people succinctly. But, but you're right, actually, it's interesting that to Deborah's point, it's actually much harder in this country to find those lists of people who are interested in your type of deal. And whereas in the States, there's all sorts of websites that, that do that. And somebody should do it properly here. I've often thought about it. <laughs> um, so that's one thing and I think for me it's just stuff I understand is the first thing a, a business that I can understand myself or lots of friends being the customer uh, is, is the second thing so often it gets way to the 10th page so you understand what that is and then signals of credibility send out signals in that first two paragraphs that there's something credible that's going to make this team break through are there any other questions here? Yeah. should be or it should be easier to find. The banks need to lend to the right businesses. And you should be able to understand what makes you a right business. And you should be able to ask that question. And when they tell you, the, if they tell you, you they're not going to lend to you, then you need to understand why. Because if it's something you could, a lot of people, you know, most people don't ask why. But often it's something you can do something about. And actually, if it's something you can't do anything about, you've, You've learned something. So I think the first thing is not give up. Here we are entrepreneurs. Don't give up. Why? Why won't you lend to me? What's wrong with my business? What, why do you think it won't work? Because I might be able to answer those questions. Or I might go away and I might think, actually, that's a really good point. But, I mean, you're taking the, the view that the banks have a, a good point of view here. I and mean, a lot of people say they don't. They're just trying to repair their balance sheets at the moment constraint, and there's lots of good businesses that genuinely can't get access to this money. I would agree with that, but I think the banks offer a rigour in a process that they should offer, because actually they've got my money on deposit, I want to know that they're being rigorous as well. So I think in the process, now whether you agree with your bank manager, trust me, I have never made a decision based on what my bank manager has told me, that wasn't my point. My point was finding out why they are rejecting my business and actually not giving the opportunity for them just to tick a box and say, because it doesn't fit the criteria. No, you explain to me why you won't lend to me and I will answer that. It's, it's like our earlier point, learning from failure or stumbling block, seeing that as actually a, a progression. Uh, uh, you would talk but, you know, it, it's, its successful target is something like 10% of your traffic from uh, Facebook, Twitter, or whatever. Um, it's also, just another caveat, it's very rare you see very big business, uh, sorry, very small businesses on Facebook or Twitter with huge followings. In fact, in the UK, there was a list of the businesses with the, most, with the top followers. And I was amazed to see that if they thought about even tiny my deck, and we don't do it very well, we would have been in the top 30, and we're tiny, because you know, people have got less than 10,000 followers in the top 30 businesses in the UK. So this is a burgeoning trend, one should understand it, one should embrace it, but underneath it all, have a differentiated product that people want to tell their friends about, and then leverage it with social networks. And then just on that point, there's some interesting research, actually, done, which says it's quite a backlash against people who feel that companies 
a sort of hijacking what is meant to be a social media. So if, if you know, the, the messages go out on the social media, they, it's not just another channel for advertising. We've got two minutes. So who's got a microphone? But on the flip side, technology gives you global leverage. I mean, that's the, if you've got something that is unique, that is on, on a technology platform, then it can scale globally. I mean, unfortunately, all the best examples of that are American, Twitter, Facebook, Google, except um, for Skype, which obviously was started here. But those platforms that can become absolutely global sensations overnight and use technology to self-replicate and to tell everyone about are fantastic. The other thing is, with Last Minute Home, what we did was we invested a huge amount of technology. At the time, it was so expensive. We had to go global. Because we decided that to have a good enough platform to compete with Americans, we had to spend 25 million pounds a year on technology. Nowadays, don't get scared off by that number, because nowadays we'd have a fraction of that cost. And therefore, you can go global much quicker. The big challenge, I think, for governments and stuff, as I alluded to earlier, is how can we help companies from the UK expand out globally and into Europe? And there are lots of barriers in, that make it hard to do that. But technology companies should actually be the ones that can lead the way. Because although it's still hard even for them, it's easier for them than for most other businesses. I know you want to say something, but let me wrap it into something else because just a final thought from each one of you about what you think people should take away from the day. Ooh. Um, I think, it's back to what I said at the beginning, that if you, if you want to start a business, get on with it and go for it because I can't recommend... I mean, just to run my own, to work for myself, I can't imagine working for someone else. And I just think, um, it's not a weak thing to say, really, but it just, to me, I can't express how much, for me, it's not about making money, it's about enjoying my day. And if you love what you do, you will do well at it. You know, just make sure you love it and go for it. Simple as that. Tom? Um, well, I just want to thank the, uh, the audience and the tweeters out there, because I've been monitoring uh, some of the tweets. Uh, that are coming, although I, I, I've just got a direct message um, from my wife saying, I thought you said you were coming home for dinner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and I just very quickly went back and said, I'm with, I'm, I'm with Debs Meaden. And she said, <laughs> I think, I think, I think that's set me. <laughs> 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 I was too, too late. Um, we are in the British Library. What I would just um, recommend, it because that's the last Before question. Before you get hit, finish your... <laughs> yeah, it's um, just to say, look, I, I would recommend you take two books out of the British Library. One is um, that brilliant book, Wikinomics, because I think it relates to the last question about disruptive uh, technology and platforms. And also, uh, Chris Anderson's The Long Tail, um, which is a real fantastic book looking at um, the role of the niche markets play. Deborah? I think you should decide what you take out of this. I think the thing about an entrepreneur is that they need to gather information, they need to learn, they need to hear things, and then they need to make their own decisions about what they retain, what they remember, and what they're going to implement. Because the truth of the matter is there is no one magic menu. This is simply about gathering information and you and us applying that information at the right moment. So I'm not going to tell you what to take out of today, because as entrepreneurs, you're going to know. Right. I think it's about the, the risk profile, again, it goes into Kath's point. It's about you are more likely to succeed if you love what you're doing every day. And I think that's the, that, that's the key message, because it is, it can be so grueling, you'll give up too early if you don't love it every day, you'll do all this other. So create an environment around you, whether it's the right partners, whether it's just something you happen to love doing, whatever it is, whether it's raising more money and giving out more control, because it's less stressful, um, all of these things, so that means you can actually enjoy every day of running your business, because it's, it's, it's the most rewarding thing in the world, but also very hard.